The final prayer in the Bible is a profound plea for the arrival of the Lord Jesus Christ. Found in the book of Revelation, it is a prayer of utmost fervor and power. It encapsulates the hopes and desires of all Christians, resonating deeply within the hearts of millions across the globe. Today, we will explore a passage from the Bible that depicts a scene of judgment following the glorious second coming of Jesus. This passage can be found in the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 to 33. Unlike a parable, this is a description of what will occur when Christ returns to earth to judge both the living and the dead. In these verses, we witness the gathering of all nations before Christ during his second coming. It is an awe-inspiring event, difficult to fully express in human terms. Rich or poor, influential or not, everyone will be present. Nations that embrace and accept the gospel, as well as those where it is outlawed, will all be there. This future scene of judgment serves as a reminder that no one is exempt from God's judgment. Regardless of worldly wealth or power, what truly matters is an individual's relationship with Christ. Those who remain faithful to him will be placed on his right, while those who reject him will be placed on his left. The imagery of Christ separating the sheep from the goats is incredibly powerful. The sheep symbolize those who have followed Christ, while the goats represent those who have rejected him. This dichotomy highlights the fundamental division among humanity, those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, and those who have not. Though we may perceive numerous categories among Christians due to denominational differences, God's word consistently divides people into two groups. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 33, these groups are identified as the sheep and the goats. Similarly, 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 refers to the perishing and the saved. God's word simplifies the division, emphasizing the importance of one's faith in Christ. As we reflect upon this future scene of judgment, it is crucial to recognize that influential individuals, including kings, rulers, the wealthy, politicians, and billionaires, will stand before Christ alongside everyone else. This realization underscores the fact that no one can escape God's judgment based on worldly status. What truly matters is their personal relationship with Christ. Among the heart-wrenching aspects of this separation is the division of loved ones, friends, and even members of the same church. Imagine a husband and wife, who might have believed the other to be a fellow believer, only to discover that one had true faith while the other did not. This eternal separation is deeply sorrowful. Today, we will focus on the sheep, the faithful believers whose hearts overflow with the love of Christ. They continually repent for their sins and rely entirely on Jesus. Their hearts echo the final prayer in the Bible. Even so, come Lord Jesus, come. Matthew chapter 25 verses 33 to 40 portrays the righteous sheep being placed on the right hand of the king. The king addresses them, saying, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. These words are both beautiful and heartwarming, carrying immense significance. The Bible reveals that God has been preparing a kingdom for us since the very beginning of time. He desires to spend eternity with us, showcasing his immeasurable love and cherishing our fellowship. We are not accidents or afterthoughts. Our Heavenly Father created us, and we will one day inherit the kingdom he prepared for us from the foundation of the world. God's desire to commune with us extends beyond our earthly existence. The God of the universe, who crafted everything we see, wants to share in our joys, sorrows, laughter, and tears. He wants to walk with us through all of life's ups and downs, offering guidance, friendship, and love. This truth is astounding and should never be forgotten. It reminds us that we are not alone in this world and that we have a divine purpose and destiny. We are cherished by God, and He has set aside a place for us in His eternal kingdom. This inheritance is not something we can earn or deserve on our own. It is a gift of love and mercy from God. Accepting this gift entails more than a one-time decision. It requires a daily choice and commitment to follow Christ. It means aligning our hearts and lives with His will, and setting aside our own desires and ambitions. We are called to love our neighbors as ourselves, extend forgiveness, and serve others in the name of Jesus. As we strive to live out these principles in our daily lives, we can find solace in knowing that God walks beside us every step of the way. He is actively preparing a place for us in His kingdom, eagerly desiring our presence in His eternal family. 
Let us hold tightly to the heartwarming message that God's love for us surpasses all understanding. He longs to spend eternity with us, enveloping us in His perfect peace and harmony. In His kingdom, there will be no more pain, suffering, or death. We will experience the fullness of joy and love that only God can provide. Therefore, let us live with hope and anticipation, eagerly awaiting the day when the King of Kings will say to us, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. May this assurance of God's eternal love and the promise of our heavenly inheritance fuel our faith, inspire our actions, and shape our lives. Even so, come, Lord Jesus, come. On that glorious day, when the Lord Jesus returns in all his splendor and glory, we will witness the ultimate fulfillment of God's plan for redemption and judgment. The anticipation builds as the scene of judgment unfolds before us, described in Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 33. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Imagine the vastness of this gathering, the representation of every nation and every individual who has ever lived. The rich and the poor, the influential and the humble, the powerful and the weak, all standing before the judgment seat of Christ. It is a stark reminder that no one is exempt from God's judgment, regardless of worldly status or achievements. This momentous event transcends the limitations of human language. Our vocabulary falls short in describing the magnitude and significance of this divine gathering. Nations that embraced and accepted the gospel will be there, alongside nations where the message of salvation was suppressed and outlawed. All will be present, awaiting their verdict. As we contemplate this future scene of judgment, it is crucial to remember that even the influential and prominent figures of this world will stand before Christ, just like everyone else. The kings, rulers, politicians, and billionaires will not be exempt from the judgment of God. Their worldly power and wealth hold no sway on this day. What truly matters is their relationship with Christ, their acceptance or rejection of Him. In this solemn moment, Christ will separate the sheep from the goats, the imagery of a shepherd dividing his flock is powerful and profound. The sheep represent those who have faithfully followed Christ, who have surrendered their lives to him and embraced him as their Lord and Savior. The goats, on the other hand, symbolize those who have rejected him, who have turned away from the truth of his gospel. Indeed, there are only two groups of people in this world. Those who have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior and those who have not. Despite the divisions we create through denominations and human distinctions, God's word consistently separates humanity into these two groups. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 33, they are called the sheep and the goats. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18, they are referred to as the perishing and the saved. The division Christ will enact transcends human relationships and associations. It will separate loved ones, friends, and even churches. This separation will be heartbreaking, as depicted in Luke chapter 17 verses 34 to 35. I tell you, on that night two people will be in one bed. The one will be taken and the other will be left. Two women will be grinding together, the one will be taken and the other left. Imagine the sorrow of a husband and wife, discovering that only one of them had genuine faith in Christ, while the other had rejected him. Think of the anguish when two people who were regarded as a pair, whether in marriage or friendship, are eternally separated, one welcomed into eternal glory, and the other facing eternal condemnation. Therefore, let us focus our attention on the sheep, representing those whose hearts are filled with the love of Christ. They are the ones who continually repent of their sins, wholly relying on the finished work of Jesus on the cross. They understand the significance of his resurrection and embrace him as their only hope. In Matthew chapter 25 verses 33 to 40, we hear the righteous answering the king, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you a drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? And when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. 
Believers in Christ will inherit the kingdom of heaven because of the grace and invitation of Christ himself. These are the blessed ones, chosen by the Father and destined to enter into the kingdom prepared for them from the foundation of the world. It is a message of profound significance, one that should resonate deeply within our hearts. From the beginning of time, God has been preparing a place for us, an eternal dwelling where we will be united with Him in perfect harmony. The magnitude of this truth cannot be overstated. The Creator of the universe, the one who spoke galaxies into existence, desires to fellowship with us for all eternity. He longs to share in our joys, comfort us in our sorrows, and walk with us through every season of life. We are not alone. We have a purpose and a destiny that surpasses all earthly achievements. To inherit this kingdom is to be in the presence of God, surrounded by His love and glory forever. It means freedom from pain, suffering, and death. It means experiencing the fullness of joy and love that only God can provide. And this inheritance is not something we can earn or deserve on our own. It is a precious gift bestowed upon us because of God's boundless love and mercy. Accepting this gift goes beyond a one-time decision. It is an ongoing choice, a daily commitment to follow Christ and align our lives with His will. It requires surrendering our own desires and ambitions, loving our neighbors as ourselves, forgiving those who have wronged us, and serving others in Jesus' name. It is a life lived in constant dependence on Him, seeking to honor Him in all that we do. As we strive to live out these principles, we can take comfort in the assurance that God is with us every step of the way. He walks beside us, guiding and strengthening us through His Holy Spirit. He is the one who prepares a place for us in His kingdom, and He eagerly desires for us to be a part of His eternal family. Therefore, let us hold on tightly to the heartwarming message of God's love and desire for us. Let us live each day with the anticipation and hope of hearing the King of Kings say to us, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. May this truth shape our lives, drawing us closer to God and inspiring us to love and serve others as He has loved and served us. In conclusion, the last prayer in the Bible calls upon the Lord Jesus to come. It encompasses the hopes and desires of all Christians and reflects the yearning in the hearts of millions around the world. As we await His glorious return, let us strive to be counted among the faithful, the sheep who follow the shepherd and embrace the kingdom prepared for us. May our lives be a testimony of our love for Christ, our dependence on Him, and our commitment to serve others in His name. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen.